Hi, Dr. Reagan Robertson, CCO of Productive Dentist Academy here, and I have a question for you. Are you finding it hard to get your team aligned to your vision, but you know you deserve growth just like everybody else? That's why we've created the PDA Productivity Workshop. For nearly 20 years, PDA workshops have helped dentists just like you align their teams, get control of scheduling, and create productive practices that they love walking into every day. Just imagine how you will feel when you know your schedule is productive, your systems are humming, and your team is aligned to your vision. It's simple, but it's not necessarily easy. We can help. Visit ProductiveDentist.com slash workshop. That's ProductiveDentist.com slash workshop to secure your seats now. This is a conversation you should start having eight to 10 years before you actually sell. Welcome to Investment Grade Practices Podcast, where we believe private practice dentists deserve to get the lifestyle today while building an asset for tomorrow. Join your host, Victoria Peterson, to design the practice of your dreams and secure your financial independence. Let's get started. Hey, Bruce, it's great to see you again. Good to see you too, Victoria. Hey, we just spent two weeks together, which is a treat for us. Me living in Hawaii, you in Texas, anytime we can get together, it's it's just fantastic. Um, thanks for joining me here today. I thought we would take a moment and let our uh, PDA alumni and podcast listeners in on some of the great stuff we've been talking about over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, it's been a, I mean, it's been a whirlwind, you know, um, I, I have to say, I've learned an enormous amount over the last month, uh, you know, in dealing with a lot of things, you know, from private equity to uh, seller readiness to sales to, uh, I mean, it, it, across the board, things are changing in the dental industry. And I, and I really want everybody to, to know what's going on. It's, it's important for you to understand. I love it. So why don't we dive into that? And I love what you said. Things have changed. Things have changed since pre-COVID, but they've also changed even in the last year uh, of what's happening with interest rates going up and things like that. So I guess we'll dub uh, this little episode, seller readiness. Are yeah. you prepared for the financial cliff? And I don't mean, guys, I don't mean like the whole world is going to stop. But one of the things you and I talked about passionately, Bruce, is that 95% of dentists cannot retire and maintain their standard of living, which is sad. Um, it's not fair. You give everything to your dental practice and to get to the end of a, a 10, even 10 or 15 or 20 years of doing something. And it all comes down to one number, one pass or fail. And then you got to figure out, can I retire or not retire? It just seems like there ought to be a better way. Yeah. And, and the pressures of inflation. I mean, we're seeing that with wages. We're seeing that with equipment. We're seeing that across the board. And which starts to eat into profitability, which causes stress, which, you know, and, and we, you know, just in the last two weeks, we've talked to probably 25 different offices and everybody's feeling that, that, that pinch. And we're talking to docs who have committed to moving forward with not selling their practice, but partnering their practice in, into a, into a practice group, which is one topic, but What's really important is for, for people to understand is when do you need to be ready to sell? I mean, when uh, do you wait in this environment? Do you wait till you're 65 and, and hang the shingle up like my grandfather did back 60 years, 70 years ago? Um, I don't know, but things are changing. And with interest rates going up, the, the DSO model has changed quite a bit. Uh, you'll hear a lot of marketing online from brokers saying, oh, it's still great. And, you know, because they still want to buy you. Uh, but when, when do you need to be ready to sell? And, and I, I think something that's very interesting when I started Compassionate Finance years ago, uh, mm -hmm. people asked me the question, what's your exit strategy? And I said, I want to build a great company that takes great care of people, takes great care of the patients, takes great care of our doctors. And, and the exit strategy will show up. It will appear. And, and it did. And, and my philosophy was that, you know, I want to build a great company. Well, many of you have built great companies. 
and you're feeling this pinch from inflation and you're not really sure what to do, maybe the stresses of day-to-day management of, of the business, which, you know, those are all things that, that we can help with. But when's the time to start thinking about these things is today. Uh, you know, one, one reason in particular is we're in a period that's going to go on for maybe another seven or eight years, this consolidation of dentistry. If you ever, if you decided, hey, Bruce, I just want to work. I just want to do my thing. I just want to, you know, and then when I'm ready to retire, I put enough money away and I'll be fine. That's great. Yeah, that, that's a whole different animal. But that's, you're in the 5%. What about all of you that maybe haven't done that or don't know what the future holds? And we've, we've learned a lot about that just in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I would say, um, you know, across the board, a lot of doctors that we work with that are thinking about selling and, and by the time thinking about selling, this is a conversation you should start having eight to 10 years before you actually sell. If you want to build an investment grade practice, if you want to maximize your leverage in the transaction. So no yeah. doubt, I, I, what, did, what did we did learn this week that the average age of the selling doctor is now 40? It's like 40, 41, yeah. Really 41, I was thinking 42, 46, but- Yeah, yeah not, there's a lot. This is not, this is not Grandpa Lampa's uh, retirement yeah. plan. <laughs> no, it's not. And, and you know, thing, again, things are changing. Uh, consolidation is going to continue to happen. And, you know, most, most of you guys know I sold the Heartland and, you know, um, I wasn't really part of anything. I mean, I was in it. Um, I was being paid to continue to work, but I just didn't feel like I was necessarily part of a, uh, of a group, part of a, uh, I didn't feel like I was partner, even though they call them partners. I think there's there's other ways of going about doing things and being ready to sell is what's maxim it's maximally important because if you're not, uh, then you're going to get somebody to tell you something, you're going to believe it, and then you're going to walk down that path and you're going to find out maybe it wasn't a rosy path as you thought it was going to be. I love that. So from <laughs> the seller readiness perspective, we wanted to just take a moment. If you're a PDA alumni, you've probably heard us talk about this for a while, but there's a couple of things that can really help you combat the higher interest rates, the effect of presidential elections, the corporate consolidation, all of that macroeconomics. It has some impact on your practice, but it's really the microeconomics of what you're doing today that will make a difference. So we have actually created an entirely brand new program. We have a workshop that comes along with it and a, a very short six-month advisory program. And, and if you are experiencing this, if you have kind of peaked and plateaued in your practice, and the uh, if you've had your practice valued, let's say, and the number doesn't quite hit what you need for financial freedom, well, did you know that if you raised your collections by 10% and you cut your expenses by 10%, so in this case, a $1.2 million practice, you're you're just trying to find twelve thousand dollars, a thousand bucks a month. If you could, if we can help you find a thousand bucks a month and we can help you grow a thousand bucks a month, did you know that your take-home pay would increase by 40%? So there's little small things that you can be doing today to get your practice ready so that when you do get devaluation, you're going to be happy with that number. So growing $50 an hour means $76,000 in revenue, a hundred bucks an hour. And most of you have done this. Uh, maybe you plateaued, yeah. you had a lot of team turnover. That's what we heard from our doctors is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to produce more, but then, you know, COVID and the team and we had some turnover. So 2023, I think was probably one of the hardest. I'm still including it in pandemic years because we had, you know, 20, was it 2020 uh, yeah. pandemic? 2021 was something of a recovery. 2022 was still a boom recovery year, but 2023, all bets were off. Like people, uh, they're, they're still migrating around the country, but most of the geographic migration had slowed down. The job markets were um, stabilizing and your practice became your practice. Yep. So, 
if, if it's working, no, no question. So now is the time to think what what am I going to do for the next phase? So think about becoming seller readiness ready as my next decade. What do I do now to take advantage of the trends that are happening? How do I improve my profit margin? Because that's the name of the game. And how do I take better care of my patients along the way? Those are the doctors I'm seeing that are getting the best multiple for their practice. And they're, they're, because the multiple is right, the money is right, they have an easier time focusing on what does life look like after the transaction? Yeah, no question. I mean, that, the thing is, sell readiness means getting ready to sell, whether it's five years or 25 years, because you're going to enjoy the benefits of being ready because your profits are going to go up. Your take home goes up and you may decide, hey, I don't ever want to sell. Again, I keep saying that, but great, because we don't care one way or the other. We just want you to get to that 5% that are able to retire and enjoy their life and travel and do all the things that they've always done. And they're going to get to do it in the future when they don't have that revenue coming in. And so uh, I think, you know, just to kind of highlight what's going on in in the world of dental service organizations and everything else, I mean, this consolidation, again, is going to last about seven to eight years. Uh, and then it'll go back to, you're not selling to private equity groups. You're probably not even selling to DSOs. You're selling to another dentist. And the difference between selling at 65% of your previous year's collections or 75 and selling your, and, and selling at six or seven times your EBITDA or profit is a very different number. Uh, in other words, opportunity is extremely high right now. And we want you to understand that. But what I also want you to understand is whether you sell or not is, is, is not the point. Well, whether you sell or not doesn't really matter if you're following uh, a growing business model. If you're growing your business and you're doing those things, and then you might find that, gosh, you know, I'm at 300000 in EBITDA. And if I could grow another 100000 in EBITDA or 200000 in EBITDA, I might get a $3 million check and have more money coming at the back end of that deal. And so what you would have sold for, again, a million dollars or a million two, now you have opportunities to sell for five million. And I always say, you know, I sold my practice, I did very well, but it's it's the long-term effect that paid me in, in with stock values and those types of things. So uh, we just want you to understand that. We've done a course now that will help you do that. Um, I implore you to go. I, I think it's now's the time. If you haven't, uh, first of all, most of you have thought of it because you've gotten 50 unsolicited offers for your business. <laughs> and, and, and now they're starting to actually call your office. Yeah, and they're calling your office. And, and, and here's something extremely important is the game of EBITDA is just that. It's a game. The game of multiples it's just that. It's a game. We had one doctor that had 10 evaluations done. 10. Their EBITDA was different in all 10, and their multiple was different in all 10. So what when somebody says, well, I got a six and a half. Well, I got a 6.58, and, and I got a six point or a four point, whatever it is, you may get an eight and get totally screwed. Because they gave you an eight, but they gave you an EBITDA of 200000 when your EBITDA really was 450000 And you would have made a whole lot more money. So don't listen to the hype. You guys have come to us. You trust us. And we are so appreciative of that. We've always looked out for our, for our docs. And I'll be honest, um, there needs to be a level playing field. And that's really what PDA has done. We've leveled a playing field. We've tried to... We've tried to give you all the information to understand what EBITDA really is so that you're making sure we're counting everything that counts into that. And we're getting the highest multiples for our group called Lampa Dental Group, which we've put together. And it's a it's a it's not a DSO. It's, you know, what, what, how do we describe our group? Yeah, it's Lampa Dental Partners. It's a dental partner group. Um, yeah. because, uh, the founders have autonomy on their four walls. Like their office manager doesn't suddenly become the boss 
I think that's, right. that's where consolidation gets a really bad rap. Yeah, it so, does. I mean, as we just peel back the onion and go deeper and deeper and deeper in our own understanding, we wanted to come to you guys, uh, let you know if you've been through the PDA workshop before and you're looking for that next level, uh, we do have another course. It's called Seller Readiness. Um, you don't have to go into full coaching to take advantage of that, but it's going to help you get organized uh, so you know where all your financial documents are. You understand how to read your P&Ls. You understand what it could mean in this environment. It also helps you um, get ready, it, whether you're selling or you get hit by the Bud Light truck. You know, do you know where all your contracts are. Do you know um, how to onboard an associate and have a solid agreement? Would your spouse be taken care of? Do you have life insurance? All the things that can decrease your risk as a solopreneur or partner and maximize your value. So seller readiness does two yeah. things for you. It, it decreases your risk. At, by by getting you organized and it increases the value. So I love uh, Christine Ewan is heading this up for us. And her her number one thing is I want to give you peace of mind. I want to help you get organized and give you peace of mind and certainty that you can make great choices. Sure. Den dentistry, obviously, we all know is very stressful, but I can tell you one way to reduce stress is to have predictability and to have the security knowing that all your stuff is spoken for. You, you know where everything is. And further, you are now have the opportunity to even grow more. So when you're not stressed, what happens? We grow. So those are all super positives. And so I'd love to see you guys in March. Uh, if you can't make March in September. Uh, and um, yeah, I, I, I just feel like this is a, a must listen to. Um, for the future. And uh, I hope you can make it. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Investment Grade Practices Podcast. If you find value in this episode, help us spread the word by passing it along to a dental friend. Subscribe and give us a like on iTunes or Spotify. Learn more about building your investment grade practice at ProductiveDentist.com today.